Folks, I'm Demonac, and it's Hearthstone Ranked time. All right, that, that was a rough game, but I managed to move up to the to rank 15. I'm now in the next bracket down. Well, I'm not, I'm less sure how much that affects matchmaking anymore because I was level I was level 16 in the higher bracket, like the worst bracket, and I had to play against a 15 to get up to this rank. But anyway. I've got a win streak going. It's two stars every time, so I'd climb the ranks much faster if I can just keep it going with consecutive wins. Instead, I get to keep fighting consecutive priests. Not the same one, is it? I like that they put on that feature where you can see the last person you played. It makes life so much... It doesn't really make any difference at all, but it makes me feel better just knowing whether or not I'm playing against the same person when I get the same class choice in a row. Getting rid of that, I'm going to get rid of the Deadly Poison too. I want to get minions I can cast to go along with my backstab. That is horrible. Going first so bad. I could have had more cards to mulligan deeper. No, instead I got, like, garbage. I need to draw a two-cost creature next turn. Only is someone injured? about 15, 16 of these 26 cards are two-cost creatures. Thank you. Actually, that works out really well, because the plus one spell damage means backstab can terminate this. Prevent myself from running into that thing that happened last game with the, the giant priest from hell. Yeah. Holy smite! I always sort of remember the name of that card, but I always mix it up, because all, all the holy things start sounding the same. Really? Playing the Mad Bomber with nothing out. I mean, I guess odds are it can't be that bad, right? Um, if I play this guy, my opponent just kills it. Dagger doesn't help me much. Spending an Eviscerate to kill this guy seems pretty weak sauce, but if I don't, I'm going to take a bunch of damage. And oh, many options. Man. I, I do have more cards than my opponent right now. Or, well, like, the same, action. We have the same amount of cards. I drew one because it's my turn, and then draw one on his turn. That doesn't make any difference. I don't know if I want to kill that or not. I mean, I guess if I don't kill it, it's a priest. You've got something you can power or shield and do other things and make it worse. I guess I'll kill it, and then if I can draw a two-cost creature next turn, then I can trigger this guy's combo instead of playing him the bad way. We must lend the sun well. Uh, okay. Nope, that's not what I wanted. But I'm gonna play him anyway because it seems worse not to have anything. Because I can make a dagger and do one damage. Woohoo! Of, like, naked creature wars, both getting cast without getting any use out of their combo or battle cry or whatever. That's bad. I can assassinate him, but I hate to assassinate something that's less. I guess, given my hand is clogged with them, it becomes more viable. But should I really assassinate him, or should I play my own 7 6? I'm going to be taking at least 6 damage if I do that. And he could be doing things to, like, buff this guy. Although, just a power word wouldn't do it. He'd have to blow, like, an entire combo. He doesn't have that many cards in his hand. Just doubling this guy's health would be okay. I mean, it would be a pain, but I can deal with that. Hmm. Oh, this is probably so stupid. I'm going to play this guy now. You gotta be kidding me! Uh, I know. He, he seems skeptical as well, but as much as I hate leaving the board alive, spending an assassinate and my entire turn, and then the best I could do would be trade the 2-2 for the 3-2 and end up down in everything, basically. I'm really curious to see what my opponent does. If this is just like a shadow word, then Ooh. obviously I blew it, but... You, you, you gotta be kidding me! Okay. Well, we both made the same gamble. Now my assassinate is going to get much better value. 
No question there. And kill you. And now trading for you is pretty good. And let's stab for one. What the heck? This was probably a mistake though, just because he could have shadow worded, but it happens to have worked out very well. It, it's it's so hard because you're trying to predict what your opponent has in their hand, and it's not like they have that much control over what's in their hand. So it's really tricky. Um. I could play this, it would give this guy taunt and stuff like that. My opponent probably can't buff her that much. She can hit him once and like it'll just take out the shield. Mm. I mean if I leave this alive it might be able to kill my guy, but what it's gonna take dagger, I take three damage, and eviscerate to kill her. Oh, well you just lost lost your talking privileges. And I can't even do both of those things and play any creature at all. I'm not going to assassinate a three-one. I think this is the. I think this is the right move. More aggressive. Wow, that switching around is so horrible. Let's sort of equalize our life totals, and I mean, if he just has another Shatter Sun cleric, that would be really bad. Um, okay, the master spell pretty bad too, but um, oh, it he didn't lose the health because he wasn't above his maximum. That's one of those things, you have to know how Hearthstone does that, because it's so not intuitive for people who are used to other CCGs. If that worked like in Magic the Gathering, then he'd just you know, like hit this guy for three and kill him. But now... Knock him down to one. Okay. Wow, that was a good thing to draw, too. Let's see what I get from this. He's... Silencing him was horrible then, actually, yeah, it might, th this person just didn't know how the health worked or forgot, which I sort of feel bad for because it's probably going to result in me winning the game, whereas otherwise it was totally up in the air. Um, I guess I'm trading this guy for that because I want to keep mine alive. And, yeah, my opponent... Do I play the other one? That's the tough thing. Because if there's a Holy Nova, it would kill all my stuff, and that would be bad. But on the other hand, I don't have enough out to kill my opponent right now. I am I might regret it, but I'm not going to play the other one. I don't want to lose all my stuff to one. I'm, 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 ex I'm taking... It's sort of safer in that I'm not risking as many cards, but I am significantly reducing the chances that I can just kill this guy next turn, which gives him more time to come back if he doesn't have the Holy Nova. Oh, that is horrible. Healing, which is always bad. For a rushdown sort of deck like mine. Okay, um. I'm gonna use the deadly poison to kill that guy. And Swamp Ooze, and we're gonna keep my options open by not playing these cards. It's really tempting to just, like, do four damage to him for some reason. I don't know why, because I don't normally feel that way, but the combo makes me want to cast it when I have the combo kind of a stupid thing, because if this was just a card that pays you to do 4 damage, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to play that now. That'd be stupid. It could kill this and save my assassinate. Although, killing my opponent with burst might be good. Now, I might not have a choice. I might have to kill them both. What do we get? SI7. So I would take four damage, if I assassinate this, SI7 this guy, and then stab it. Actually, if I have to do SI7 and stab it, I should do it to this guy, because I'm going to take one less damage from doing it. Assassinate this, SI7 him for two, stab for three, and that'll keep my thing alive. If another Shadow Madness comes, it's going to suck, but there's not much I can do about that. I mean, there's... 
in your imagination, your opponent can have any card in their hand. And given that, there's always something bad they can do. No, I think this is the best way to do it, actually. And I'm keeping my eviscerate. Refresh my dagger too. We're at basically the same health. My opponent has more cards. I have a couple creatures in play, but one Shadow Madness would screw me. One Holy Nova would mostly do it. He can heal himself all the time, so I'm not even really ahead in life. I'm fine with that. I mean, it's not good. It sucks that I lose a guy, but it could have been much worse than the Shadow Word Pain. That is bad. I need to have a way to deal with that. I can't leave it around. Ah, oh, man. Do we know I'm going to play the Bloodsdale right here? Because i got nothing better to do. I can Eviscerate this. That would knock it down to a 1-1. Then I can just stab it. Ah, okay. The Eviscerate first because of the drawback of the Light Spawn? That works okay good game design that the creature's drawback is also its advantage. Here we go. I'm not really winning here, although I did just get uh, a... I think I gained one card in that exchange. I can't even keep track anymore. This is bad, though. Like, one Shadow Madness will screw me. Holy Nova hurts a lot, because it does damage to me, heals him, and... Okay. That could have been worse, actually, because now he's out of cards, too. So, it's kind of all on the table. Boy, did that not help. That was not the card that I needed to draw at this stage of the game. And that's the chance you take when you put them in your deck. That's why I u didn't used to have two backstabs in my deck. But the I need it for the momentum in the early game a lot of times. Now, see, this is bad, because as long as we do nothing, the priest wins. Just like by fatigue, if nothing else. If I keep drawing cards that draw me cards, that's not so bad, though. He's not big enough to kill that, so it's not the end of the world for the Shadow Madness, I Here guess. Still very bad if that happens, though. I suppose you could make an argument for keeping him in my hand and then playing when I got another creature just to get one more damage out of it, but the chance of him being able to attack is worth more to me. Powered Shield? Okay, that's funny. It does nothing for her, but my opponent just needs to draw more useful cards. That was a useful card. God damn it. So, well, we know we're going to play both of these cards, pretty much. It doesn't matter the order. So I do this, and let's think about this. See where the damage goes, first off. Okay. I can hit my opponent for 9, 10, not even close to enough. So I have to kill stuff. I can now do 3 damage to him with the backstab, so I can trade this guy for him. No, I can't, because this guy can't attack this turn. Err. I'm going to have to trade the knife juggler to kill that. There's not even close to a choice. His drawback doesn't actually affect anyone at this point, because you're probably only drawing one card per turn, and I I doubt he's got a lot of creatures that cost more than seven. So now, there's no point in popping that shield. I've just got to go over the head and hope for the best, really. Because I have the taunt advantage. He's got to get through my creatures, not the other way around. So close. Hate playing against priests. Is it mind control? It is not mind control. That is good. It is another card. That's bad. That means I gain, like, all it cost him was one mana, so he's still got his whole turn, basically. Mind control would be really bad. Light spawn in bad position for some reason. That doesn't save him, though, does it? No, I've got H, 9, to win. Yay! I win more! The, 
long as I this mess I'm so glad that Here we go. That mess up graphic position didn't make me misclick, because that <laughs> that was his best chance at that point. Oh so close. Kind of rough. Now I've got full stars. Stars upon stars. And yay, yay golden fan of knives. Okay, so I think that was the first game of this video. We'll do another one. If not, then I messed up and this video will be over long, which you, you probably don't even care, do you? Whatever. Half, half an hour seems like a good length. Most of them come out shorter than that because most games don't go quite as long. Although if I keep playing priests, we're going to have some long games. Valera versus Valera. No, it's going to be a mirror match instead. I will be your death. Yeah. Whoever whoever talks second sounds like a spaz. I'm gonna pitch the shift too, because that's not really what I want in my starting hand. It's it's a great thing to draw in the mid game, but I really would have liked to backstab, but I'll take this guy. This is an awesome thing to get in the starting hand to go with the coin. Going second, definitely an advantage in most rogue matchups. Because if she has a backstab, that normally helps compensate. Like if I just played a two coined out a 3-2 creature, then you could backstab it and then play your own creature and be fine. But against this, I still have the momentum even if she backstabs one. No, she's just going to save her cards and front stab one. No, she's going to backstab in it. I mean, I guess if you have it, you might as well. It's interesting that she's not that she doesn't feel the need to save that for combo stuff. I'm that that's got to be worthwhile. It, it prevents me from gaining momentum. I'm gonna play blood sail with no no boost. Still like as good as a river croc. It's still hard to kill with a single backstab or non combo eviscerate. Mind if I roll need? Or loot hoarder. The light protects me. Okay. Makes sense. I can play the knife juggler, but I can't have anything else go with him. I can play the SI7 agent, but I can't trigger off his ability. You know what? At this stage of the game, the most beneficial thing to have out would be the SI7 agent. So I'm going to do that. This guy's toast. And, I mean, it's going to make her vulnerable to the bubble, and it's going to draw my opponent a card, but I'm still going to kill that, because it preserves my 3-3. Three, three. So it does sort of help me keep board control. Of course, if she has something that does two damage now, then she can use it on him and kill him and just use the, lose the bubble. I'm still going to have to make a dagger and stab her next we turn in all likelihood. The sun well. That's unpleasant. Another backstab? Okay. Really? You're going to do that and not finish it? That is so weird to me. So let's see. If I play the knife juggler, it doesn't shoot. It just just be playing him. Make a dagger. I wonder. Hmm. It's it's not really what I want to do, but I think my best play right now is just defender of Argus and go on offense. Our life totals are pretty similar. That bubble is going to be a huge edge, but at least I get to make the attacks, My shield and I'll end up with the defender of Argus anyway. Hey, lights out. I think that puts me more further ahead than any of the other stuff. Also, next turn I can knife juggler and SI7. It's too bad that you have to choose your target for this before the knife juggler goes off with, with his randomness, but it makes sense. Yeah. 
Okay. The Defender of Argus with two full guys to buff did get me ahead somewhat, though. So that's not too bad. And then... I mean, they, my opponent's poison dagger is unfortunate, but the SI7 agent kills her, and then I get to do my free, my extra point of damage to her, and things are looking okay for now. Actually, things are looking pretty decent. The, she has a poison dagger, but I have two guys who do three damage, so I'm slightly ahead in board position, and ten hit points ahead. So they're both the same number of cards. That's going to help her get some card advantage, though. And then she can stab him. She kind of wanted to stab me because she doesn't want to take any more damage, but no, you really got to kill the knife juggler. It makes more sense. Okay, now here's the problem. I can play this, but I can't play that and kill him. And then he just kills this. Which sucks. Um... Now the question is, is it worth playing a Defender of Argus with out getting his ability? Which is horrible. But let me kill this. So many options. So there's also a possibility of play this combo eviscerate her for four no it, it, it doesn't it doesn't get me that much closer and not killing this guy seems bad so I'm gonna kill this guy it's just do I make a dagger and save my stuff which so many yeah saves my cards but I'm not gonna be playing this guy for a the while at that rate so I'll try. Oh, oh, crap I don't know which is better I guess I'm gonna go with the version where I end up with a 3-3 at the end of my turn it feels like such a waste, but he is... Uh. So next turn I can play this and either make a dagger or play a two-cost card, of which I have 16 or so. I think in a previous game I said I had 16 creatures that cost two or less. That's not true. I have about 16 cards that cost two. Damn it. Okay, what have I got? Betrayal! That is not a card that I wanted. Can I draw a better card? Yes, but not right now. Oh. I still have more cards, more life, and a bigger creature in place, so it's not the end of the world. She needs to find some way to do My one damage to this. That would do it. Ooh. There is something that her, is, makes her deck different from mine. My shield for That's kind of annoying. As handy as that is, though, I don't know if I'd really want to play with the card for that. I mean, it does help you trigger off other combos. Like, early game. That would serve some of the purpose that I have backstab for. Alright. Drawing a card would be awesome, but I think this guy's hugeness mm. is more valuable. I'm going to take a lot of... because I have the health advantage, so I'm going to play this guy. Normally, like, you'd think, oh, I want to betrayal and have this guy kill this one, because he's just so much more dangerous, but I don't... If I do it the other way, if I have this guy kill the Defender of Argus, then I can stab this guy, take five damage, and have the only creature in play. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me! Which at this stage seems like a really good Here advantage. Go. Oh, my opponent could draw, like, an Assassinate, which would be really good for her, sort of, but... I'm still going to be able to play an Azure Drake and then some other stuff next turn. Because it, draw me, it draws me a card. That's awesome. That is bad. Oh my god, is that bad. I'm glad I still have an Assassinate. I want to get a Ragnaros for this deck. Oh, he'd probably be replacing one of these guys. Yeah, so... Right of that. That doesn't leave me enough to play this. 
Yeah, I only have nine mana. Oh. Well. With Ragnaros gone, it's going to be a lot harder for my opponent to recover. Although I only have eight hit points, uh, two eviscerates and a stab would kill me. Just sap him? Okay, I'm assuming you have like a combo thing. I guess you wouldn't have to. You'd still use the sap if you had it. I don't like sap that much. No, you do have a combo thing. Are you like saving him? I don't know. So, drawing a shiv would be awesome. I've got two chances. Not the first one. No. No shiv. It's just a basic knife. There's not much point in destroying it. So many I'm only drawing one card, but you can do five damage to me if I don't do something. This is so utterly ridiculous, but I think my chances of winning actually increase hmm. if I assassinate the 2-2. Two -two. Now she only has three damage on the table. She just can't kill me with one card. She could draw a card that kills this, but I'll still kill her with a dagger next turn. Can't have two copies of Ragnaros, who could potentially have just killed me. It'd have to be some kind of crazy legend I'm not thinking of, or some giant charge card. That extra two damage would have killed me. Oh. You gotta, normally you'd never do that, but you have to check the situation, and the puzzle there worked out that I had to assassinate a 2-2 in order to win. If I just played a 7-6 guy without taunt, I'd be dead now. So, I earned that star. Win streak, rank 14, go me. <laughs> we'll see how much farther I can get next time. Show some love to the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demon Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.